coach, I guess, uh, over the, you started with a uh, point to get you into the playoffs. What does it mean for your group to clinch a playoff spot? Well, it means a lot. I think at the beginning of the season, it was, uh, well, it's probably a goal of every hockey team, but uh, it was a goal for us to make the playoffs. And um, there was some, you know, there were some hard times, I think, in the middle of the season where we didn't have a lot of bodies that um, we had uh, a lot of guys step up in different areas. And, um, you know, as I said earlier on, like we, we had fourth liners step up and play first line role. And now we have everybody back and guys are being shuffled around. So, um, yeah, it, it means a lot to a lot of players who uh, helped us get there. So it's been a real team effort, I would say, uh, you know, through COVID and through the call ups and through uh, the taxi squad and and everything. Uh, it, a, a lot of guys on the team have had something to do with making the playoffs. So it's been good. And even though they're, you know, you're still, the playoffs are still a ways away, you still got quite a bit of regular season. It's got to be good for you to see these guys all coming back. You get Declan is back wearing a regular jersey. Greg Morales is wearing a regular jersey. David Gustafson's out of COVID protocol. It's almost creating a little bit of a difficulty for you because you've got so many healthy guys now. Yeah, decisions for sure. I mean, I think, I think as an organization or as a coach, and, and uh, it's, those are all good problems to have. Um, but you're right, uh, there are decisions to be made. And um, I, I think it, it's, it's going to create, and we, we had this meeting with the players uh, on the road, uh, it's going it's, it's to create an internal competition for sure. And it doesn't really matter, I don't think, what you've done in, at Christmas time or 25 games ago or 30 games ago. You be, need to be at your top of your game uh, going into playoffs um, to be in the lineup. You know, the Jets announced the signing of a couple of their prospects, Henry Nickenen and Daniel Ferguson. Uh, they also said that the Jets, will, the players that signed PTOs with your organization. So how is, what is their plan for A, when they're going to be in, and B, how you're going to integrate them and whether you're going to be able to get them into games? Uh, all good questions. Um, they are going to be here tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first thing is, is to uh, acclimatize them with the organization, the arenas, the players, the staff, um, get them in practices, and then we'll go from there. You know, um, they're, uh, they're two, uh, two real good prospects, and we want to look after them, and uh, we'll see how they, how they fare in practice. What's like the intake process like there when you have two guys coming, joining a team like that? Are, are you sort of like match them with buddy system or like guys that are going to show them around or do things kind of just happen organically when they join a team? Yeah, well, I think, you know, um, Mike Keane does a pretty good job of that. Uh, you know, like he'll, there'll be some of the, some of the Euros on there, like Billy and, and Gus, they'll have some kind of connection with these guys. So, you know, we'll use those guys first. But, uh, you know, as we've talked about so many times, this team is so special with uh, how close they are. They'll have no problem whatsoever uh, fitting in and helping them with whatever they need. Uh, this group is special. And just one more to that. Um, when you're integrated into the lineup, like obviously you have so many options to begin with into who's going to be in the lineup in internal competition. How do you kind of manage that with getting these prospects some repetition and time in practice? Uh, well, for sure, they're, you know, like practices uh, to get them up to speed and get them to know our systems and get them to know uh, the drills. Like, it's all a process. It's going to take some time. Um, you know, every year, this is, everybody goes through this every year with these prospects that come in at this time. and. Um, it's, it's not that difficult. It's just uh, giving them the time, watching them, and, and being patient with them. Seven players now having made their, their, their Jets debut, uh, NHL debut, sorry, and, and that's got to feel good for you from a development perspective. Yeah, I think it's great. And, I, you know, it feels great for that to happen to all these guys. And as a coaching staff, we're always very happy for them to go up because it gives them that boost. And they work hard here, let's face it. Uh, they work hard and, and they go through a real grind to get that opportunity. And, um, you know, we just saw Mikey Esamont get that opportunity and we couldn't have been happier for him. Like, it's, uh, they strive for that for the whole season. But I think the biggest part of it uh, for these guys in this group is that uh, they really all stand uh, for each other and, and they, uh, they're, they're really happy for each other. They get that chance. And it's been really nice that so many of them have got the chance. So it's not just been one or two. Um, they've, a lot of them have all had the, uh, 
the game or two uh, call up. So that's been really good for the group. Is, is that the uniqueness with this group? Because oftentimes it is that, you know, these guys are all competitive. Everybody wants to be the guy who gets that, that call up to the NHL. But, you know, like you said, these guys seem happy when, you know, uh, Johnny Kovacevic made his NHL debut. The press box was full of Moose guys watching him. And it seems like every time that's what happens. These guys are genuinely happy for their, you know, fellow player, even if it's not them getting that recall, yeah. that it's one of their brothers, if you will, that, yeah. that's getting that. Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, it's a credit to them as a group. Um, it's a credit to the leadership group in there that keeps them like that together. Um, but they're just all good people. So at the end of the day, the organization's done a great job in signing a bunch of great people, you know, and there's not much more to it than that. And as far as your question about being unique, yeah, it is, for sure. Okay, last one for me. Is uh, Christian Reichel, he's, he's wearing yellow non contact. What is the plan for him? Because he seems like he's flying out there. I know he, he <laughs> suffered the, the block shot in, in the game against Calgary, but uh, is, there, is there kind of a plan for him to, in terms of when he'll transition out of that? Uh, I think he's transitioning out of that real quick after what I saw there today. Yeah. Uh, and obviously you saw it too, but um, yeah, it's just funny, like, some of the guys on the bench there are talking about it, like the guys in yellow and the guys that haven't played, like Eggo, they're flying around out there. The other guys are a little tired, you know, like they've been running a grind and they were chirping them on the bench, on the ice there today, so I thought that was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, he looked really good and uh, he'll transition into, a, a, I would imagine, into a, a normal jersey tomorrow.